University Distinguished Professor Elias Elias has been teaching for over 25 years and joined NDSU back in 1990. He's an expert recognized worldwide in Durham wheat breeding and genetics. North Dakota produces 65 to 70 percent of the total U.S. Durham crop basically used for pasta. It's a multi-million dollar business bringing in almost 500 million dollars a year. 93 percent of the Durham acreages in North Dakota are planted with varieties developed by NDSU. Anytime you eat pasta, anytime anybody in the United States eat pasta, NDSU, the Durham Project, myself and my technicians we have something to do with it. So if you, like, if you like pasta, you thank us. If you don't like it, then don't say anything about it. Dr. Elias's genetics program, which is part of the plant science department, develops Durham wheat varieties to maximize the economic return for producers. It's a process that takes 10 to 12 years of basic and applied research culminating in excellent quality Durham wheat for North Dakota Durham producers, the pasta industry, and the international export market. North Dakota, on average, farmers, they, have, they get direct impact from our work almost about $500 million a year. Indirect impact, you add $2 for every dollar that is direct impact. So all of a sudden you see this project here, it has impact on North Dakota over a, almost a billion, a billion dollars. Uh, so far, we have released, since I joined, we have released 15 Durham varieties. You see a population that you don't think it's good, there is no sense of wasting time in it. Dr. Elias earned his bachelor's degree in agriculture in Syria and his master's degree in plant pathology from Montana State. His doctorate in agronomy came here at NDSU. He strongly believes his research, like all professors, is crucial to students learning in and out of the classroom. You can't separate research from teaching, it's a circle. You're not going to keep it for yourself, you have to teach it to somebody and that's where the students come you have to teach them all these new innovations and new technology and new methods. And the students are the new minds. With the critical thinking that I encourage, I expect the students they're going to have new ideas and new hypotheses. And in order to solve these ideas, solve, prove these hypotheses, they need to carry on a research. Sh shriveled and discolored, so you don't want that. There are two ways you can teach. One of the ways you can hold the student's hand and guide them to where, where they want to go. And the other method, you can give them all what they need and throw them in the middle of the lake and tell them to swim to shore. The first method, you're going to learn maybe quickly, but also you're going to forget, possibly you're going to forget quickly. But with the second method, I think you have to be creative. You have to figure out what the waves are doing, what's the shortest cut to the, to the shore, and uh, so you have to use that critical thinking and get to your destination. Balancing research and teaching can be challenging, but also very rewarding. Through his research, Dr. Elias gets the opportunity to travel across North Dakota as well as New Zealand, China, and Arizona to check on nursery. His advice to students is simple. Work with a subject that you like and work hard. Take pride in your learning and don't get hung up on a grade. Concentrate on learning. Don't be afraid of your professor. Challenge it. It's, uh, you know, some professors, they like that. And don't ever think that there is a question that you have in, yine, in mind that you say this is going to be a dumb question. There is no such a dumb question. There is no such, such a thing. The dumb question to me is the one that you did not ask because then you are not going to learn anything from that.